The following is an independently produced community access program. The viewpoints expressed are those of the community access producer and do not reflect those of Shaw Cable Systems. The program is presented in response to CRTC policy guidelines regulating community programming. Welcome to another segment of Kirby's Successful Aging. We really appreciate you being with us again today. We've had many topics that have been really interesting to learn about, and tonight we're going to talk about learning. And tonight we have two guests with us again. And please help me welcome Dorothy Dooley from the Kirby Center, Center of Excellence, and Terry Allen, who's here from the Calgary Retired Teachers Association. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you here because we think that one of the most important things about getting older is not to, to forget to keep learning. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about what that means for each of you within your roles and within your lives. So Dorothy, maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, where you are at the Kirby Centre and what your job is there. Uh, yes, I'm at the uh, Kirby Centre of Excellence, which is the research centre. And I've been there over 10 years now. And I first became interested in lifelong learning when we did a project on, a research project on resilience. And we found out that one of the factors in keeping older, older adults resilient was opportunities for lifelong learning. Great, love that. We're gonna come back to that in a second. Yeah. And so Terry, you're with the Calgary Retired Teachers Association. Mm -hmm. right. I've been blessed mm -hmm. to be your guest for I think it's about four years in a row now. And that's right. just, thank you for that. That's been amazing. Tell us a little bit about what the mission of that group is. Well, the Retired Teachers Association intends to um, support uh, teachers throughout Calgary. And we also have a parent organization called the Alberta Retired Teachers Association that uh, looks after the, ben the benefits and programs for teachers throughout Alberta. And within Calgary, uh, we um, have uh, about 1,500 members uh, from both school systems and charter schools as well. And uh, we, we offer programs for teachers, um, for the retired teachers throughout, um, throughout Calgary. Our programs have encompassed a stepping out conference, which is basically a um, uh, two, for 250 people and uh, we run a, a series of lectures and um, different um, workshops uh, for learning uh, in uh, a variety of areas and uh, on top of that we also offer um, excursions mm. for our teachers uh, throughout the province really. We've gone off down to the uh, southern part of Alberta and into uh, up to the north, up to Edmonton Museum, and so on. So that sounds like a lot of fun. It is Keeping a lot of fun. Keeping those connections are so important. You know, yeah. when you've yeah. taught for many yeah. years and you build friendships, yeah. sustaining those in a different way are really, really important. It has been. It has and been. fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah. you partake yourself and, and your wife partake in a lot we, of those? We partake in a few of them. I, not not all of them. We've got a lot of other uh, activities that we're involved in beyond the retired teachers group. So yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So Dorothy, let's touch back with some of the resilience. Yes. When you were uh, uh, facilitating the research on resilience, what were some of the things that stood out for you as a couple of the pointers from that research? One of the things that came up that we hadn't really even expected was the importance of spirituality in resilience. There were other factors like gender. Females tend to be, we thought, tend to be a little bit more resilient than main, males. Uh, rural background has a, an important, is an important factor. If you've come from a rural background, you also know a little bit more about resilience. And there were, like, were things like the importance of exercise, physical exercise mm -hmm. again, and lifelong learning, which we hadn't really thought too much about. And again, also there's the importance of socialization, family, and support network that we wow. found in the research. Do you see a tie-in with a large group like the uh, Teachers Association that that's, while we might be using different words, mm -hmm. we're seeing real, some real themes here that are similar? Yes, I think so, Luann. The, um, within our group, I think that one of the important things has been the socialization. So you talk about uh, resilience, but people are, are um, 
socializing to a, a large degree within that group and to go back and forth um, and then of course the activities that we offer also, also provide that opportunity. So, That's yeah. neat. So Dorothy, Kirby Center mm -hmm. has a lifelong learning group yes. uh, also called peer learning because I yes. think sometimes people interchange those two uh, names and so talk a little bit about peer learning, lifelong learning at Kirby. Um, lifelong learning is more of a general term and it can encompass anything. It can be taking classes, it can be learning on your own, it can be learning how to play a musical instrument, how to uh, speak another language, it can be learning in art, anything like that. Peer learning is a subset of lifelong learning and what it is is when a group of seniors get together and they learn from each other. Mm. They have a vast store of accumulated knowledge and they learn from one another. They don't utilize a teacher. There are no exams. There are no uh, set prerequisites. You can have any kind of education and join. And it is run by the, the members of the group themselves. So they have a say in their learning and are participating in it rather than just recipients of learning from a teacher. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> and um, we started that uh, after the resilience research and we've continued. And um, it's quite interesting to watch the group. They're, they have a lot of fun and they pick these topics and it can be technology, there's a lot on history, important people in the world, politics, they love global warming and they argue about it. <laughs> so it's getting people out and getting them, they have to do their own research, so they have to go home when, once they've picked the topic, look it up on the internet and then write something and present. So it's getting them to use the internet, it's stimulating them and then they're running ideas off each other which, uh, which is very good. And it's great to see them argue. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that debate yeah. is healthy. No matter where yes. you are in your life, debate is healthy. It might uh, not always agree with the person you're debating with, but I think a healthy debate is a really important thing in our lives. Does I'm some of gonna, that resonate? I was just going to say, we've been using peer learning in schools for many, many yes. years. Yes. You know, it doesn't always mean teacher directed per se. Uh, as teacher at the front of the classroom, there's often a lot yeah. of peer learning going on with, within the teacher's um, classrooms as well. Yeah. But uh, yes, it does resonate because we, uh, we're doing the same thing mm -hmm. in, uh, within our workshops that we offer for, um, for our retirees. Uh, we've offered um, workshops on computer safety, for example. And uh, now some of those are being more directed, but there are also yeah. peer, peer groups involved. And uh, we, well, we just offer a variety of things on finance and so on and so on. Yeah. I think that's resonate. great. It, it, it's amazing when you start talking how many similarities can come out. Mm -hmm. I would guess that there's a lot of groups out there that are doing lifelong learning or peer mm -hmm. learning and they don't cloak it in that kind of a way but the reality is that's what they're doing. They're yeah. keeping people engaged, they're offering mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. for both giving and receiving learning right. and challenge maybe mm -hmm. every once in a while as well mm -hmm. and I, I think that uh, Calgary as a community has been known to step up. Yep. Uh, when I think about aging, I hear so many times at Kirby Center that people might not be working full time, but they always are busy. And Terry, you talked about that before we started on camera, mm -hmm. that although you are retired from teaching, you're busy. You're always on the go. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I don't have any have too much time in my hands for sure, but I'm involved with Rotary uh, as a um, uh, member of the Rotary Club of Calgary South, and within that, I have a number of activities I'm involved in. But I'm also uh, been an avid uh, supporter of science fairs in the city for many years, mm -hmm. and uh, still on the board of directors there. And um, so I find all of those activities keep me keep me quite active. And just learning new things about them as well, because you have to now communicate uh, with people in a different way. And so I'm having to learn a lot about computers, which I didn't have to learn before. <laughs> so uh, those are all new strategies for me as well. 
Yeah. I think that some of that uh, fits for, again, the resilience and the peer learning and what happens through the various amounts of abilities to uh, be in uh, classes and programs uh, at Kirby Centre. So we, uh, we have programs that would teach you different art, yes. uh, languages. What are some of the other examples that you can think of? There are so many programs I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Learning another language, mm -hmm. uh, you have mentioned art, bridge, um, oil painting. Um, classes on uh, uh, safety, uh, anything that is a new issue to a senior, we seem to be able to pick it up and, and come up with a program. That's a lot on computers, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's right. one of the main ones. One of the other things that you talked about was exercise, and yes. it's important to keep yourself busy physically so that you keep all of your abilities as long as possible. And I know at Kirby Center we have all the way, way from frail to fit uh, exercise mm -hmm. programs, and you guys talked about how you go on hikes and you do different things, and right. do you see that as well as really important in your life? Yeah, there are, yes, I do, you know, and probably as much as Anything else, we can try to get out and, and be active within the within um, you know as a family. We should try to get out, but I think it's also important within our uh, retired teachers group. Uh, there's also another group called the uh, Retired Educators Association oh. within Calgary that um, actually is probably more active in cycling and hiking mm. and, and doing trips um, in, in uh, to different parts of the world. And that's one of the things that we've also done is taking a variety of um, excursions with a tour group um, and to uh, to Europe and um, I guess they just came off a, a river cruise. So uh, River cruises been, are big. Oh yes, yeah, a big thing now. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that's become really big and uh, lots of the tour companies are really going in that direction with the group of aging folks that are coming along is they are doing a lot of planning for the, the bike trips and those kinds of things over Europe and you know different parts of the states and through the Caribbean and all those kinds of things. That's becoming a huge target that they're specifically coming out and asking old or adults pay attention to my advertising because that's really where it's at mm -hmm. and I think that no matter what you do in the spectrum of health and keeping active it's just important to do that yeah. well one, one of the list, one of the lists that I have on my bucket list is mm -hmm. I would like to go to Oxford Cambridge or Harvard for their continuing education programs mm -hmm. for old, older adults yeah. mm -hmm. and they call them now third age learning yes mm -hmm. and they have really advanced and of course come to Canada and the US as well but it would be really fun to go there to, yeah, the, to the Oxford's ones right yeah We've enjoyed this uh, first half of the segment. We'll be back in just a little bit talking some more with Dorothy and Terry. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. Welcome back. Thanks for rejoining us to talk about lifelong learning, peer learning, and keeping your brain active. I am continuing to talk with Dorothy Dooley and Terry Allen, and we sure appreciate their time coming and visiting with us today. Welcome back. Thank you. So I'd like Thank to pick you. up a little bit, Terry, when we were talking about the Teachers Association, the Retired mm -hmm. Teachers Association, it would be my guess, and you can tell me how that feels for you, that a lot of people, when they retire, don't necessarily just retire. Uh, maybe they ease their way out, or they start a mm -hmm. second career, or they do that volunteer work or that project. Talk to me a little bit about what you see there. Mm -hmm. I think, of course, it depends on uh, what age the person retires at. But I think a lot of um, teachers retire uh, when they can receive their, their pension. And that's usually between 55 and 60 sometimes. And at that point, then they, they do. They scout out other opportunities. And those opportunities might be um, uh, f further uh, opportunities to teach within the school system as a substitute. Uh, I know some people who go back and do that. Normally, however, that would not be the case um, because they try to give preference um, as substitutes to the younger teachers mm -hmm. and those who are coming into the field. But a lot of uh, the other the teachers go back into uh, new fields. They'll go and teach at state sometimes. Uh, they will. Um, find opportunities to, uh, to work um, in areas where they can use their teaching expertise. Uh, but maybe as real estate agents, as um, 
It varies to a large degree. What did you do? What did I do? I went back to work for an organization called Science Alberta Foundation. And I was back there for six years after I, after I retired from my, my school. Were you, did you teach science when you were teaching? I taught science and math and then I became an administrator in the school system. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so so that energy stayed with you oh, and yeah. uh, still does to this day. Yeah, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's still there, yeah. As I say, you know, I'm, I'm not wor working uh, for an organization, but I am uh, volunteering a lot. And, yes. Uh, and that makes a big difference in, you know, the time commitment you make, but it's important, I think, to stay active. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Dorothy, let's pick up a little bit on the volunteer part of that and the, the contribution that the wealth of knowledge that older adults have and how they give back. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, the older population is a wealth of knowledge and also a huge untapped resource. And that's why it's important to continue in uh, opportunities for lifelong learning to keep your synapses firing to keep you active. There's a huge connection between um, a healthy mind and a healthy body. It used to be uh, years ago we just thought about exercise and keeping your body physically active and exercising and recently we're looking a little bit more at keeping your mind active and the boomers have been particularly interested in that area and um, 